Okay, what we're going to do on this video is to look at the organic questions from the CHEM 1004 stroke CHEM 1601 paper and how you go about answering exam questions in the organic section. To illustrate this, I've taken a couple of questions from recent papers and we'll start with question 5. This comes from the 2011 paper. It's fairly typical of the sort of question that you'll get asked. So let's just have a look at the question, part A1. Assign the alkene geometry in molecule A as E or Z, explaining your reasoning fully. And, and these are some key words. Very often with these questions, I see people getting the right answer, and it looks like they know what the reasons are. But unless you actually tell me precisely what your reasoning is, I can't give you all the marks. So make sure that you read the question and give what it asks for. So how do we go about answering a question like this? Well, as I say, we're explaining our reasoning fully. So we're going to assign the alkene geometry, and the first thing we need to do is to assign priorities to the substituents at each end of the double bond. But you can't just say you're going to do that and do it. You have to explain how the priorities are assigned. And the priorities are assigned according to the atomic number of the atoms attached directly to the double bond. So here's the structure. We don't need to draw it out in full. At the left-hand end, our priority is 1 and 2. And we can just emphasize that we know what we're doing. Carbon, higher priority than hydrogen. At the right-hand end, chlorine has a higher atomic number than carbon. Okay, So that's the prioritization done. And then finally, we need to assign a letter E or Z and explain how we do that, that assignment. So the two higher priority substituents are on the same side of the double bond. They're both at the top there. And therefore, this is Z. And that's an answer that we get you the full three marks for that question. If we move on to part two of the question, here we're assigning a chiral center as RRS. And again, we need to explain the reasoning fully. Now, you don't need to re-explain prioritizing according to atomic number. But you're not going to get more marks for explaining the same thing twice. So you can, you can take that as read. But first, you have to say what we're going to do. So we're going to assign the priorities to the four substituents at the chiral center. OK, so here's our molecule. And we can just stress that we know what we're doing still by atomic number. Chlorine ranks higher than oxygen, ranks higher than carbon. And so we can assign these ones as 1 and 2. OK, so now we need to distinguish between the two carbon substituents. And to do that, we need to move along the chain until we find a difference between the two substituents. And again, you need to write that down so that I know that you know it. OK, so we're going to move along the chain until we find a difference. So here we can become a bit schematic in how we do this. There are the two carbons that are attached to the chiral centre. They each have two hydrogens and a carbon attached. So we still can't tell at this point. But then the substituent that's at the top left, this carbon has another carbon and two hydrogens attached. Whereas this carbon has two carbons and a hydrogen. And so our CH2, CH, CH3, 2... The substituent at the bottom is going to be substituent number 3. And the substituent at the top left, CH2CH2R, is going to be the lowest priority. That's going to be number 4. So we can write those on our diagram. That's 3 and that's 4. Now the next task is to rotate the molecule so that substituent number 4 is pointing away from us. And again, make sure that you write down that that's what you're doing. And at this stage, I'm perfectly happy for you to simplify the structure. So we can even just draw it like this if you want. So there's the four substituents. We want number four to be at the back. If you can't remember how to do this, then look back to your lecture notes and we'll see. Let's draw it this way. So we'll have four at the back, two coming forwards, and three up at the top left. And now you go from one to two to three. We'll see that that's in a clockwise direction. And so this chiral centre is R. And again, that answer would give you the full five marks on that part of the question. Part A3, I hope, is fairly straightforward for everyone. Drawing the enantiomer of A. OK, there's various ways you can do that, but by far the easiest is just to turn all your wedged bonds into hashed bonds and hashed bonds into wedged bonds. And that'll give us the mirror image of the molecule we started with. Part 4, a little bit more testing. 
because we need to draw a structural isomer that's also a meso compound. So we need to remember what a meso compound is. It's a compound which has stereogenic centers but has a plane of symmetry, so overall it's the same as its own mirror image. We need a structural isomer, so we need to know what the molecular formula is, and we can count that and work out it's C11H20Cl2O. Okay, so we need a plane of symmetry. It means the oxygen's got to be in the middle of this structure, and it's easiest if we draw it as a carbonyl. What's that? Five carbon atoms, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're still symmetrical, and we'll put the two chlorines in. And so there's an example of a structural isomer of A, which is a meso compound. There are many others you could have drawn. Of course, it's always worth checking that this molecular formula is correct, that it, it is an isomer of compound A. The other thing just to say here as a general rule in terms of answering exam questions, always write something down. Yeah, um, there are no marks taken away if you get this wrong, and there can always be partial credit. If there are two marks available for the compound, then probably if you drew something that was a meso compound but you got the formula slightly wrong so it wasn't quite a structural isomer of A, then you'd probably get a mark for that. Or if you drew them, something that was a structural isomer that wasn't quite a meso compound, you'd probably get a mark for that. There's certainly nothing to be lost by writing something down for every question. OK, we'll move on to part B now, and this is a, a question about drawing mechanisms. So using the curly arrow notation, depict the mechanism of each of the following one-step reactions. OK, the first one, I'm just going to draw it on the question there. So we're going to form a bond between this carbon atom here and this carbon atom here. We're going to start our uh, electron flow from this enolate oxygen, this O minus, and we'll push the electrons into there, out from this carbon atom to form a bond across here, and then up onto that oxygen to give that an O minus. So drawing that with those three arrows would give you the three marks. The second one, it's a little bit more difficult to, to draw it on there, so I'll draw it out again at the bottom. But again, if you're working out how to answer this, I think the first thing to do is work out which atoms in the product correspond to which ones in the starting material. And it shouldn't take you too long to realize that that structure there is going to correspond to that part of the product, and therefore this alkyne must be that bit there. And so if we draw the two reagents out, and we're forming the bonds, this bond and this bond. If we draw the atoms where we're forming bonds close to each other, it makes the, the mechanism much easier to see. So here's the alkyne. And we're forming a bond from the O minus, lone pair there, to the carbon. We're making this triple bond into a double bond, forming a CC bond, pushing electrons onto that nitrogen. OK, so that's the mechanism for the second part. The third question. Again, this may catch you out, but the first thing to look at, we're starting with an OH minus, and we're ending up with H2O. So we've got to find a proton from somewhere, a hydrogen atom. And with a little bit of thought, comparing the starting materials with the product, you'll see that the hydrogen must be one of the ones that's attached to this carbon that I've just marked with a dot. So again, let's just draw that out again with the reacting atoms a bit closer to each other. So draw on the hydrogen atom that we're going to remove. We form an oxygen-hydrogen bond like that. We break this CH bond, we make a CN double bond, and push the electrons from the NO double bond up onto that oxygen. And that will give you the marks for part B.